Okay, this is me. If you want to see the links, please go ahead. But we're just going to move on. So developing C sharp connectors in Power Platform. This is a really powerful tool that not loads of people use. I haven't seen tons of people using it. Uh, so why? You can extend the functionality of the platform to include lots of things that sometimes I think should be there. Have you not tried it because you don't know C sharp? Well, I don't blame you. But in this demo, we are going to do it without. Well, I'm going to try and do it without typing any C sharp. If I have to do a couple of lines, please forgive me. But I'm going to try and do it without doing any C sharp. If you don't know Swagger, which you will see in a moment, which is also essential to help define the API, don't worry, Copilot can help us with that as well. So what we are going to do as an example is build a custom connector that can provide us a sum function. There, there are things in Power Automate which you can use to sum numbers, but they are super slow. The standard method is super slow. And this is a really easy starting point for building a connector. Now, this is a frequent requirement. I have done a blog post on this a few years ago and a YouTube video. So you can see that that has had, it's attracted a lot of comments and uh, views over the years. And lots of people have used the technique that I found. And um, the solution is OK, right? The solution I built is OK, but it's not simple. And so one, one person left a comment. I don't know how it works, but it reduced my flow run from one hour to just a few minutes. So somebody out there, probably lots of people, will have implemented this solution, but they don't know how it works. So maybe we can do something better. And this person down here says it's laughable that all this is necessary to make a sum. I kind of agree with that. Like when we first used Excel, probably the first thing we ever did was doing like an auto sum, and we were like, mm, yeah, that's quite cool. Um, and apply to each is in Power Automate tend to be quite slow and use a lot of API actions. So for example, if we want to sum a thousand numbers, we're going to use at least a thousand API actions. So this is what a sum would look like in Power Automate. Normally we would have a variable and we'll iterate over items and add them together. And this is what I put together, this X path method. So it works fast, it's good, but it's complicated. Uh, Power Automate is a JSON orientated tool and we're converting a whole bunch of numbers to XML to use an obscure summing function in the X path um, function. So it's not really a nice solution. Um, it works well, but it's just obscure. So um, there are some limitations when you build these uh, custom connectors in C-sharp. You can have only one script file, but that script file can support many operations. And as many operations really as you can fit into one megabyte of code, so a lot. Execution has to finish within five seconds. So this is a limiting factor, but you can get a lot done in five seconds. And I'll show you that hopefully in a minute if we get time. And the namespaces that you can use are limited to what you see on the screen right here. But you can do a lot with those as well. There's some really powerful stuff in there. So I think we're just going straight into the demo now. Now, Microsoft website has some functionality on how to do this, how to build this uh, locally in, in Visual Studio. But it's not that easy to follow. If you click that link, you'll start off with the template that I'm going to use in this call. This makes things a lot easier. So we're going to start with this template. Then we're going to make some small changes and let Copilot do the rest. We're going to create the sum function. We'll test it locally. And if we get time, we'll upload it to Power Platform and test it there. But sometimes when you upload the connector to Power Platform, it takes a while to kick in. So let's go. First of all, I'm going to go to Power Automate and show you something. So here's my custom connector that I've already built from the code in here. Now in here, there's only three files we need to worry about. Script.cs, which is the one that we are going to upload. Definition, which defines the shape. And our test operation, which allows us to test it locally. So the first thing we're going to do is this hello world. And Microsoft have a hello world as well, but this one does a little bit more, which is still not very interesting, but you will get the idea. So here's our custom connector, and I put in my name, Paul. So I'll Hello. just change that to David. It's okay. 
and then hit test. And Hold on that's, just gonna, that's just going to return hello, David. So it's the, it's the YML file, the YAMA file, the Swagger file that determines how this connector appears and what the outputs are and all those kinds of things. So hopefully this will run now and the output isn't that interesting, but so it will just literally say, hello, David. Okay, it's going to do its thing now. Okay, so there's the output. Hello, David. And if I edit that, get rid of that from the compose, we can see there's the greeting response there. So if we flip back to the code, the important part in this script.cs is this concept of an operation ID. And over here in our test, we are sending an operation ID with it. Our operation ID is hello world. Here's our script. And in the case when the operation ID is hello world, then it will run this hello world function and it will try to grab the value name from the payload, which is the requirement as defined in the swagger. And it will just return back response hello name. So while David was introducing us, I asked Copilot, I haven't pressed return yet. I said, please create another function like hello world, but instead of a value called name, it will receive a JSON array of numbers. Call the function aggregate, and the purpose of this function is to sum the incoming list of numbers and return the total. So let's just see what it comes up with. And I will say, so we need to do a couple of things. We need to have our function. Now it's going to, it's, did, it's done the right thing for us. So it's just remade. I was going to ask it was, please add this aggregate section. So let's have a look at, you know what, let's just copy the whole thing in. Let's just assume that it's worked. So it's from there. Hopefully, I'm going to get away with my objective of not writing any C sharp. I just want to point out the top, you'll see that I've got lots of usings that are grayed out. You won't need all of these. You could delete these lines. This is just for things I've written where I've used those tools. So will it compile? I don't think so actually, but I'm also going to say, so I've got this test operation function, but I'm going to say, pl please modify hash test operation.cs to what do I call it aggregate okay so I have said Please modify test operation.cs to allow me to test the new function aggregate in script.cs. Please create a separate function to create the payload. And it looks like it's done all right here. Okay, it has. So the first thing we need to do is come over here and we're going to have another case statement here, which is our aggregate. So I'll stick that in there. And our little menu is going to change as well. Stick that line in. So this is so we can test it locally and you really do need to test it locally instead of in the cloud because you will need a few iterations to get these things right. And so here's our aggregate method. So let's grab that. Put that in there and it's got a it's suggested an array of one, two, three, four, five. So let's try and run it. I think we're gonna get an error here, but we'll see. Maybe not. Okay, so here's our hello world, which we saw before. I'll run that quickly, and you can see it just returns the JSON response hello pool. And then if I run it again, oh. Yeah. 
Nice and DC right now. It's object. Bring. Gone wrong. There we go. I can see it. Nice thing, right? You don't really need to know what's going on. Please modify the in hash. So you can type hash to specify a file. So that looks for the incoming numbers in. It was just going to grab numbers from the body, which we didn't provide. We put it in a property called numbers. So it should now modify it to. Yeah, now it's, you can see it's trying to get the value numbers there. So that should work now. So let's grab that. And we'll replace this aggregate function. OK. Should be OK. Let's see. OK, so it has returned sum of 15. Now, one other thing I wanted to point out in Power Automate is when we if we go back to the run history of this. One of the things that I put into the template script is a timer, which you can see is the very first thing that happens here as stopwatch begins. So what you can execute on your lo own local machine in five seconds is going to be a hell of a lot more than you can execute in the cloud in five seconds because you'll have a lot more resources available. So if I take this returns a greeting and say show raw outputs, you will see there is an X dash processing time header added to the output. And this hello, David, took four milliseconds. And you have got 5,000 milliseconds to play with. So as long as you're, you've got some headroom above and no 4,000, you should be all right. So we have now our function working, and it returns the sum of any numbers that we send to it. And we didn't write any C sharp at all. So to make this work in Power Automate or Power Platform generally, we need to do a little bit more. So we're back over to our YAML. I've got one minute left, so hopefully we can <laughs> get it to do that. So I'm going to say, given the new function in script.cs, uh, called aggregate, can you provide a new swagger definition so that the function can be called. And this will generate this swagger response that we need to paste into here to then upload to Power Platform. And then that is our custom connector made. It's actually given it back slightly in the wrong format, but it will still work. So we can find here our aggregate, and you can see the post is aggregate operation. It didn't add some of the nice things in, but it's got the important stuff. Aggregate consumes application JSON, returns JSON. The description is the numbers array, which is what we'd see in, in Power Automate. And it accept an array of numbers as integers, and we could change that so it would accept numbers of any type. Mm -hmm.